I'm Saiful Islam, I'm a professor in computational materials chemistry uh, at the University of Bath. Um, I was born in Karachi, Pakistan and came to the UK in 1964 when my dad was posted here um, to the High Commission uh, and grew up in North London, Crouch End. I went to school to a boys comprehensive called Stationers. I liked chemistry and went on to study chemistry at degree level at University College London. And then after that stayed on to do a PhD uh, looking at um, structures and properties of crystalline materials but using computer modelling techniques. The appearances can be misleading um, both in my research and in my name. Um, in terms of my research I'm a chemist that doesn't wear a white lab coat. Um, I do computer modelling using very powerful supercomputers to uh, look at complex materials. In terms of my name, Saiful Islam, uh, the surname obviously suggests a particular religion. Um, even though I grew up in a, a Muslim household, I eventually, whether I had any faith I don't know, but I became more atheist and non-religious. Um, and I think it really mirrored my fascination with science and the rational and scientific method and possibly because my dad wasn't strongly religious so he never pushed it upon me and, and I always feel that, that children should have that space to explore faith themselves or no faiths at all. I feel very in a way, very fortunate, I'm a professor at a, a major university and I have to say through my academic career I've never felt any prejudice um, in terms of my race uh, within the, the university environment and through the um, academic environment. It's always been very collaborative and supportive, as it should be. Um, in contrast, there was a period in the late 70s, uh, when I was a teenager, where it wasn't easy being a, uh, a young Asian teenager in, in London. There were incidents of uh, packy bashing and I, I got beaten up by skinheads a couple of times as well. And once, particularly with my younger sister, which you know, s stays with me today that you know, such you know, vile bigotry still is still out there. Thankfully, a minority, but uh, um, worryingly, there, there is a bit of rise of uh, neo-fascism in parts of Europe right now. But uh, I think in, in Britain and and, and, in, and in the academic environment, that's not visible. I think it's well established that one of the biggest challenges of this century is the energy challenge: developing cleaner, sustainable energy and I'm fortunate that I work in the energy materials area. We're looking at new compounds that can be used in either fuel cells or lithium-ion batteries. And fuel cells can be used in cars or homes to cut CO2 emissions. And lithium-ion batteries can be used in electric vehicles or hybrid electric vehicles, again, to try and cut CO2 emissions. My research looks at new crystalline materials that can be used in both um, and we try and understand more about their structural and conduction properties within these novel materials using very advanced computer modeling techniques. An important property within these, some of these materials is that the ions can move very fast through the crystal lattice. That's called ion conduction. But it's very difficult to probe by experiment alone. So using computer modelling we can try and map out, almost like a virtual microscope, map out how those ions move within that crystalline lattice. And understanding those properties are very important, understanding the function of a battery or a fuel cell. Because of the energy research that I've just described, I think it's a really exciting time to be a scientist in general and a, a chemist in particular because we need chemistry to develop new green technologies. Another aspect of science which is great is that it's really open to, to everyone 
And if, if you're really interested and passionate about science, you can get really involved. And you know, I'd, I'd say that that sense of wonder and beauty about the natural world is fulfilled by studying science.